The northern forest region is unique in the ways geology, ecology, culture, and economy have intersected and evolved over time. Connected to the east and west by shared ecology and forest types, and to the south and north by centuries-old travel routes along the region's major waterways, the northern forest is a glacially sculpted crossroads of natural and human communities. The forested landscape has always been closely linked to people's lives and livelihoods. First peoples sustained themselves completely from the forests and waterways that provided wood for shelter and heat, wildlife and plants for food and clothing, and corridors for transportation. Since the arrival of European settlers and immigrants, a diverse and dynamic rural economy has sustained communities. Powerful rivers, vast forests, innovation, vision, and investment combined to make the northern forest an industrial powerhouse in the 1800s. Jobs in sawmills, turning mills, paper mills, and other industrial operations attracted workers from around the world. Communities that grew up around the mills became the region's commercial and cultural centers. Burlington, Vermont, and Bangor, Maine traded title of Lumber Capital of the World as the northern forest supplied lumber to build the nation's growing cities. By 1910, the northern forest was the world's leading paper-making region as companies like International Paper and Great Northern Paper secured investment from industrialists in Boston and New York. Many areas that are forested today were once cleared for sheep, dairy, and vegetable farms. Sheep outnumbered people six to one in Vermont in the 1840s. Maine's Aroostook County led the nation in potato production for the first half of the 20th century. The northern forest wilderness helped define the character of America in the 1800s. Painters attempted to portray the vastness of nature so that viewers could feel the presence of the divine. Poets and philosophers hailed the northern forest as a place where people could test and renew their spirit. By the late 1880s, people from cities across the northeastern United States were seeking the fresh air and pure water of the northern forest. Health professionals and businessmen promoted the region as a destination for treating illnesses ranging from tuberculosis to asthma, hay fever, and general malaise. Outdoor adventure in the northern forest has long attracted people eager to test their strength, skill, and endurance, whether on foot, by water, or on the snow. Native people helped the first Europeans explore the region. With the arrival of railroads in the mid-1800s, a growing number of residents made a living by providing guiding, lodging, and other services to tourists seeking northern forest adventure. In the late 1800s, modern conservation took root in the northern forest as interest in recreation and nature combined with concern over water and timber supplies. These often competing interests led to some of the nation's earliest land protection and resource management efforts. New York voters passed legislation to ensure that state lands within the Adirondack Park would be forever kept as wild forest lands. Huge fires and floods in the clear-cut White Mountains of New Hampshire motivated federal legislation called the Weeks Act, which led to the creation of the National Forest System in the eastern United States. Land trusts and town forests created a hundred years ago formed the foundations for conservation efforts that continue today. The relationship between people and land is constantly evolving in the northern forest. Today, this region, this crossroad of natural and human influences, is at a crossroad of its own, as people and communities work to craft relationships between people and the land for the 21st century. <laughs>